You believe that you need to be married to your spouse for a lifetime of commitment? How odd is that today? And they may look at you and they may say, you're odd for God. If I was to title this lesson something different than the format we've been using in this series, that's what I would call it. Odd for God. For the next few minutes, we want to look at the life of Noah and notice as he was living and up, had an upstream faith in a downstream world. And the text we're going to consider is verse number 7 of Hebrews chapter 11. So if you want to be making your way there, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen, is yet moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness which he is by faith. We have looked at Abel and we have noted there that he was a worshiper of God. Last week we looked at Enoch and we observed that he walked with God. Today we're going to pay attention to Noah and how he worked for God. Next week we'll look at Abraham and how he wandered with God. But as we consider this story of Noah, Noah had faith that resulted in him going to work. He did exactly what God commanded him to do. Several times in the Genesis account, we are told that Noah did all that commanded him to do. Well, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 is a summary of of Genesis chapters number 6, 7, and 8. And one of the things we will see in Noah when he went to work preparing the ark while the rest of the people was living in rebellious lives toward God. Noah, he worked for God. Three things we will observe. First print number one is this. Noah believed God's Word even when he could not see it. If you reference over in Genesis chapter 6 and you run your finger down to verse number 13, I think that verse is the verse that tells us that God was going to to destroy the world. Noah was forewarned that this world in which he lived would be destroyed. And so he believed that word. So much so, he began to prepare the ark. And if we're going to walk in the footprints of faith left by Noah, we will believe the word of God. That's what faith is. Faith is believing in something you can't see. Verse 1 of chapter 11 of Hebrews defines it as a substance of things not seen. And let us understand that Satan is busy trying to convince you otherwise. Satan is busy trying to put some doubt in your minds to get you to question your faith. To get you to say to yourself, well, maybe it's just not really true. Satan is busy. But a strong, committed faith will see in our minds the promises of God. Noah, he cannot see nor probably could he visualize how the world is going to be destroyed. But he had believed the Word of God and he acted on that. Some years ago, 1952, there was a young lady named Florence Chadwick. And Florence Chadwick was going to attempt to swim the 26 miles between the Catalina Islands and the California coast. And so she started out and she began and she was following along over by some smaller boats of people watching out for sharks and tearing for her safety. And if she got tired or 
was injured some way that was there to rescue her. And she was about 15 miles, or 15 hours rather, into this journey. And a thick fog set in. And it was so thick she could not see ahead of her but a very short distance. And she began to doubt her ability. And she told her mother, which was in one of those little flat boats that was following along behind, said, I, I don't think I can make it. I don't think I could do this. But through the encouragement of her mother, she swam for one more hour. And finally, unable to see the coastline due to the fog, she gave up. She crawled into the boat. Only to find out she stopped one mile short of the coastline. She sat in the boat and she was asked why she quit. She said, I couldn't see where I was going. 26 miles, almost a distance from here to Supper Springs. Try to imagine swimming that distance. Well, two months later, she tried it again. And as she was out in her, in her course, the thick fog again came around her. But this time, she succeeded. And she reached the coast of the Catalina Island. And they asked her what the difference. The fog was just as thick, if not thicker, as she said this. And I could imagine in my mind seeing the coastline. And imagining seeing my destination prompted her to keep swimming. She could visualize the reward. Brethren, that's what we're talking about. The promises of God. But Florence Chadwick went on to make that swim two other times later on. She could visualize the image of her reward. And God has made some promises to us. We may not be able to see them. But can you visualize them? The real promise of Forgiving my sins? Can you visualize God doing that and, and taking those sins and remembering them no more as if He's dropping them into the deepest part of the ocean and never to be seen again? Can you visualize that? Can you mentally see the promise when He says, I will not forsake thee or leave thee? As he would say in Hebrews chapter 5. Can you see God being with you? <coughs> well, Noah could. Noah had no idea about the world being destroyed. But he, but he believed God's word and he took him in his word. And that's what faith is. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Jesus told his apostle Thomas one time, after his resurrection and he appeared to his disciples, Jesus said to Thomas that he is blessed for what he had seen. But then he went on to say at the very end of John chapter 20, verse 29, but more blessed are they that have not seen and yet have the ark and God closed the door. Noah didn't close the door. Once the animals were gathered, God closed the door. And here's something I want you to know. I thought it was sort of interesting. You probably you have overlooked and never thought about it. Genesis chapter 7, verse number 1 says, Come into the ark. And in that verse 7, we see that Noah and all of them went into the ark. But verse number 10 says that seven more days passed before the flood waters came. You know what that means? Here we have Noah, a man used to work, and a man that had been spending years in building the ark. 
a man that was being active all this time. Here he is sitting inside this ark. The door is closed. And he sits there for seven days waiting. A week. We think about being quarantined today because of the COVID-19. Basically, they were quarantined. And the ark, you can't see much of the PowerPoint picture, but it's got the ark out in a desert area. No water. But he and his family are inside this ark with the clothes for a seven days waiting. Do you think he had any doubts? you think he was beginning to question God just a little bit? The day we're told that one day our world will be destroyed. And Jesus says unto us, I will provide a way of salvation. To Noah, he would say, your world is going to be destroyed. I will provide a way of salvation. Noah believed that word. Noah obeyed what he was instructed. Noah went to work. Biblical faith always results in obedience. Working out your own belief, your own salvation. If you truly love the Lord, you will do what He asks you to do according to John chapter 14 and verse number 15. <coughs> Although not stated in the book of Genesis, Knowing human nature, I can envision Noah receiving some ridicule. Noah maybe receiving some persecution. Because see, he was going upstream in a downstream world. He may have been the brunt of a, some many jokes until the rain started. And then it was no joking matter. Many think, and probably rightly so, that it had never rained before. According to Genesis chapter 3, after that time the, the earth received its moisture from a mist that covered the earth. But when the rain started, it was no more a joke in matter. But all this ridicule, if he had it, and I expect he did, it did not distract Noah. Noah continued doing what God commanded him to do. There's no hint that Noah ever had any questions against God. There's no hint that he ever doubted why he was doing what he was doing. God told him exactly what he needed to do to be saved. And God tells us today, brethren, exactly what we need to do to be saved. So who are we? The question whether well, baptism is a salvation matter. Who are we to question the church and what the church looks like in its organization? Who are we to question that a marriage is to be between one man and one woman for life? Who are we to question the significance of assembling together with the saints? God spoke to Noah and Noah responded. He did what God told him to do. Question. Today when God speaks to you through His inspired word, do you respond? Do you do what He asks you to do? Do you try to balk a little bit? Do you question some of the things? Do you do what you want to do and ignore other parts that you don't want to do? See, Noah didn't try to compromise. He did what God asked him to do. And by Noah's obedience, the text tells us he brought condemnation upon the world. We are not told how long it took Noah to build the ark. God promised earlier in Genesis chapter 6 
that it would be 120 years before the world would be destroyed. And so it is assumed that Noah took 120 years to complete his work building the ark. And during that time, remember what Peter said? He was a preacher of righteousness. During those years of preparation of the ark, he preached to the people. And how discouraging it must have been to preach to the multitudes all that amount of time without any positive response. But in the end, people failed to repent through his preaching. They failed to heed the message of this righteous man and they were condemned. So Noah's righteousness condemned the people. The story of Noah teaches us that people, some people will be <coughs> punished, some people will be condemned while others are rewarded. <coughs> some people will be lost, some people will be saved. And that's the same that we see in the projection of judgment in Matthew 24. Jesus talked about you don't know when the times are going to be, but it's going to be like in the days of Noah. One will be taken, one will be left. I don't know why that's there. If I skipped this. Somewhere I messed this thing up, didn't I? Number three. Noah received a reward for his faithfulness. He was rewarded because he and his family were saved. He is considered the heir of salvation, heir of righteousness. Let's go back to that passage here, verse seven, Hebrews eleven, verse seven. Toward the end of that passage, he says, "By faith, Noah, preparing an ark, saved his family, by the which he condemned the world." and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. God made a covenant to Noah. He made a covenant that he would never destroy the world again by, flood, by, by water, and he put a rainbow in the sky. We saw a rainbow just a few weeks ago. Martha, the son, Brad, and I were out in the backyard. We saw a rainbow. And I said to Brad, I said, Brad, what does that rainbow mean to you? He said that the world will never be destroyed again. I said, that's exactly right. But when I was a boy, you know what I saw a rainbow and I thought it meant? There's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's the story I was told. The story of Noah was never emphasized on my heart as a young child, but it needs to be. God will never destroy the world again by water. He made that covenant. Next time, the world will be destroyed by fire. Like with Noah, punishment will come to those who do not know God and do not <coughs> obey His gospel. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. But the flip side of that is equally true. To those people that do know God and those that do obey the gospel, they will receive salvation. And God keeps His promises. Let us come to grips with the idea of this matter of obedience. Jesus just practicing anything in the name of religion does not in and of itself make it right. Jesus will tell us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but by me. We have to do it His way. And in the Sermon on the Mount, He said His way is narrow and straight and few there be that find it. So just everything and anything in religion is not acceptable in the sight of God. Peter goes back to this story of Noah. We're going to close our thoughts with Peter again. This time we're going to go to chapter number 3 of 1 Peter, verse 20 through 22. Pay close attention to these words. And then the thoughts are yours. Beginning of verse number 20. 
speaking of the days of Noah, says, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved. Now, verse 21. The like figure, like figure to what? The salvation of Noah and the ark. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth now also save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Noah and his family were saved in the ark while the rest of the world was lost. Likewise, baptism now saves us. It's not the removing of dirt from the body. It's not taking a bath, but it's being obedient to what God is saying. It is the answer of a good conscience. <coughs> the instrument of salvation in the days of Noah was the ark. The instrument today is Jesus Christ. People in Noah's day, they were saved because they were inside the ark. People today are saved because they are inside the body of Christ, spiritually speaking. And how does one get into Christ? He is baptized into Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. So the question for the day, and we're going to close, is where are you spiritually? See, the Lord wants you to be saved. There's a book of passage over the end of Revelation. I don't know how well you can see it on PowerPoint, but Revelation 22, verse 17, the Spirit and the bride say, Come. There's the invitation. It's the Lord's invitation. Let him that heareth come. Let him that is a thirst come. And this invitation is open to any and all. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. The first subject for the Lord's invitation. The song of number 50 has been announced. Maybe you need to get your life right back with the Lord and restore your relationship with spiritually. And you need to come before this group of people publicly and acknowledge that decision. Maybe you need to be baptized into Christ to start that journey. Put yourself in a position of, figuratively speaking, being inside the ark, being saved from the flood, the destruction to come. I don't know where you are, but if we can assist you publicly, we invite you to come as we stand together and as we sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing God? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this time? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood?
will be number um, 694. After that, uh, Brother Steve will have our closing prayer. Thank you. Canaan's land I'm on my way with a soul and never dies. My darkest night will turn to day where the soul of man never dies. No says there'll be no Thank you. 